Japan is the second largest record market in the world, highly sophisticated, with 75% of its album sales being on CD, a very negligible singles market, but with profit margins on albums being so much greater, Japan is obviously a prime territory for conquest by all major groups. How's it done? We came to Tokyo to catch Australian group Crowded House playing their first Japanese concerts. Session man Mike Gubb on keyboards, three-piece band Crowded House are reaping the rewards of a year's hard touring. Singer Neil Finn and later drummer Paul Hester were both members of New Zealand cult band Split Ends. Their new band, without enormous success in Europe, have cracked America. Now based in Australia, Crowded House are on their way to breaking new territories. A lot of people have said to us since we've been here that they like our music because it has serenity. And I've never heard anybody describe things like that in the West. So that's and so I guess I was thinking about that a bit tonight, you know. Trying to be trying to touch the old Japanese nerve or something. I don't know. You're gonna meet a whole load of radio producers yeah. in a minute. You're gonna be there, right? I'm Neil. Pleased to meet you. Thank you for your uh response. We are very honored to be open the center once the Thank you. No, it was our pleasure. It was our pleasure. First time to Japan. We are having a wonderful time. We, we are very much affected by Asia in Australia, and we sort of feel part of this whole, you know, Asian part of the world. It's like the last frontier to be totally dominated and conquered by the Americans. So um, it's interesting to see that the Japanese taking on uh, American culture in a mass way, but then uh, basically undermining the rest of the world economically. that we did with Split Ends that was, that was successful in America was actually quite pop, really. Right. In I fact, almost more so than, well, almost more so in one, some ways than, than now. It's just more quirky kind of pop. I think it's because it's a bit more look. straight down the line, yeah. you know. I don't know why sometimes I very natural thing and it resulted from being in New Zealand and wanting to be noticed and wanting to be different from all the glam. Next stop. Oh yeah? Next stop. No, that guy's actually saying Split Ends was actually quite a good band as far as he's concerned. In, in, in Japan they were taken quite seriously and with quite a bit of reverence, which uh, I've just translated for you. Folks, more or less. And then he ended up with Next Stop. I think that one of the, the attractions to Crowded House by the American media was that we were non-format, as it were, in the respect that uh, they are very high, they are very uh, regimented in their format for TV and radio, and we were a little more relaxed, and they it tickled their funny bone, and they actually liked it, you know. At the moment, being an Australian band in America is probably quite quite a fashionable sort of thing. It happened as well about seven or eight years ago when Split Ends was having a bit of bit of success in America, and and they called it the Australian Invasion when Men at Work happened and all that. To me, it's like it's a totally irrelevant point where you come from.
A lot of the songs are extremely dark yeah. and, and edgy. That's Nick and Neil. Oh, Neil ma ma mainly is Catholic guilt. You know, I mean, they're both lapsed Catholics. I'm totally unreligious. You despite know, the watch. Despite my watch. My, um, can you get a close up on that? You are unreligious. Yeah, I got this in Mexico. It's got the disciples around the outside. And Nick, but Nick the, wears a similar watch. It's quarter to religious. Judas. It's quarter to Judas. <laughs> See, I get all my lyrics, all the first ideas come, just fall onto the page with the melody. And uh, I have to look at them to decide what they're about. I don't consciously sit down to write about a particular subject. And when I look at them, they usually suggest some kind of um, inner turmoil, which um, is more evocative thing to write about than baby, baby, go down, can, let's go down to the disco tonight, you know. That sort of thing. So most of my songs end up being a little bit bitter and twisted. <laughs> and I'm trying to figure it out myself, really. I, I don't know. I think it, I stopped going to confession when I was about 15 years old. I think I do it in my songs now. To temptation, knowing full well the earth will rebel. To temptation, safe in the wild. We can go sailing in black Lose yourself when you linger long To temptation right where you belong I mean, when I was young, I always looked at it towards England because England was where all the good music came from, from my point of view anyway. And uh, so a lot of the things that influenced me were English stuff. I don't feel quite the same way about England now, maybe because I've lived there and also in the last few years I've sensed more cynicism in England in the music industry than I ever noticed before. Look at this. Bill, Mick and Max. It's a new super group. I no, wouldn't mind the numbers. The so audience is a little bit bigger than ours. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Bit, yeah. The same sort of market. Oh, well, I don't know. I don't, I don't think so, no. really. Not exactly, no. Crowded House is basically now just a case of uh, nobody trying too hard and nobody too, being too precious about what we do. So it, it ends up just being a, a culmination of uh, as much simplicity as possible. I heard that would be someone, someone that you've seen in a magazine. Premonition is coming true. Oh, baby, not so green. Oh, baby, not so green. Oh, baby, not so systematic. Waking up the dead. Systematically stepping on my head. We've avoided any kind of snobbery as far as what our audience should be. Having to be liked by a certain group of people in order to feel good about yourself to me is just uh, is really narrow. And the songs that I grew up with that I love the most are songs that are able to be sung at a party and uh, by anybody, by you know families and stuff. I used to sing at parties when I was a kid all the time and used to go down to the local pub and sing with Maoris and they used to sing things like, you know, she wears my ring and all that stuff. And you know, it's as corny as hell, but. When you get 20 or 30 people singing it, it's just glorious. It's like singing hymns, you know. Good night! Sayonara! Um, I think we should do one more, and I think we should do... Um, I, thought, I think they're hungry for, for Western culture, and I think they like a band that's got some character to it. And I think a lot of it maybe is that they sense in, in Western music that there's a certain element of abandon and freedom and, and they live a very regimented society here. So for the young people, it's kind of a means of expression or whatever is to follow Western music because it liberates them or something. I mean, that might be making too grand a thing of it, but it seems a bit yeah. like that. Bye-bye. Thanks for everything. <laughs>